Hey guys, Two Take here. Make sure that you watch to the very end of this video. We've got a lot of good content, a lot of good conversation, but we're going to drop an announcement at the very end that I don't think anybody wants to miss. All right, see you soon. It sends chills up my spine knowing that I ride under the same flag that a lot of my friends of different uh, uh, people that came here from a different country, different colors, you know, whatever you're – at the end of the day, we're all Americans. Yeah. And you know what? If we're going to argue about, you know, nonsense stuff, we can argue about that next time. Yeah. But today, we're Americans. Drop. Drop. Speaking of, before we get started, thank our sponsors. Yeah, we need to, I think, I think today we need to start with thanking the sponsors because I got a feeling that uh, we're going to get going here in a minute and we're probably not going to kind of remember what. Yeah, because we got a hot topic to talk about. Rush Truck Centers, everybody. Man, shout out Rush Truck Center, uh, Dalton, Jeremy, everybody over there, and Lufkin, um, not only the the best truck dealer in East Texas, but best in the country, hands down. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Trucks Accessories, Tri-State Vacuum and Rental, Massey Motor Freight, Black Tie. Yep, Black Tie. New kid on the block. New kid mm-hmm. on the block. New kid on the block. New kid in town, as they say. And, yeah. Uh, but the only thing I'll say, you know, certainly is – as far as sponsors and, and friends, I don't even like calling them sponsors. I like to call them friends. Yeah. Is, uh, you know, when we even thought about doing this show, you know, Rush Truck Center was like, yeah, man, I, let, I let, want a sponsor. I want a sponsor. I'm like, we ain't even done our first show yet. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, it's really special. So, while we lagging, man, let's just, let's dive off into this. The this. topic of the day. Man, let's. It could be so the, we, it could be the topic of the month. Man, bro, listen. Dude. So here's what's happening, y'all. We have we've done our best on our side to like to talk about stuff that not everybody else is talking about. And I think we've come to the realization that like, you know, our viewers and our friends and our supporters, they want to hear our view on some major topics. Like this convoy. The convoy. The Canadian convoy. Got my attention. Sure did. I mean. And you know what? Let me wrap that back into what I was just saying a while ago. And I've said this before. The thing that impresses me the most, whether you support it or whether you don't, and we're going to get into what we feel about it. <laughs> yeah, we are. We going. We, I, I'm, I'm cool with telling you where I stand on it. But uh, the thing that. That, that really gets you the most is about trucking and the trucking community. And this is what impresses me the most about this convoy um, up in Canada and the one that's being planned now is that the people got together. Right. And, and that's hard, man. I, it's almost impossible. Yeah. Because I've been in trucking a long time. There's a lot of people that are watching today and they watch our videos and TikToks and, and YouTubes. They've been in trucking a long, much longer than me. Yeah. 50, 60, 70 years. So they know the good old days when there were no large companies. It was mostly, you know, owner operators. Yeah. And you had a voice. You hardly have a voice now. The biggest reason why, if you if you don't listen to one other thing on this show, this is the most important thing that I'm going to say. And I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. In my mind, I'm right. <laughs> Comment back. If you don't think I'm right, we're more than happy to hear anybody's opinion. But the fact that these guys got together yeah. in support of what they believe in. And that many. And that many. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was almost a million, wasn't it? No. Nah, I don't know the number. Total. I don't know the number. Yeah. But that Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau guy up there, he's acting like it's no big deal. But I promise you, oh yeah, that dude is. It got his attention because you know why he made a statement on it. No, most definitely, yeah. That's how you know, guys. If you're involved in this deal, 
that's how you know you got somewhere yeah. because he made a statement on it. Yep. Even though he tried to to exert his dominance like it's no big deal, if it was no big deal, guess what, guys? He would have talked about it. it yeah. But he fled the Capitol, and then he went somewhere, undisclosed location, and made a statement. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, hats off to you guys because you got his attention. Yeah. Now, you may not achieve the goal that you set out, but you said what you needed to say, and it's going to take more. Because you know what? All these things that that we complain about and and how, if you look back, our freedoms have been eroded a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, they don't the just come one day and just no. like, oh, we're taking all your freedom away. Yeah. You're not just going to do one convoy. Right. No. You have to be strong and you have yeah. to stick together. And that's part of what, you know, Stephen, you and I talked on the phone last night about, you know, kind of the topic of the day. And so this is what we want to get into is how do you plan for stuff like this? Yeah. You got to, you, okay. Let's, let's talk about just briefly, Stephen, what you and I talked about last night about the convoy to Washington, DC. Yeah. All right. We're going to convoy. What do we need? Well, the first thing you're going to need in a big truck is you're going to have to make sure you got enough fuel. Because guess what? There ain't no truck stops. Not in Washington. <laughs> Not once you get in where y'all are planning on going, <laughs> you're going to get in there and get stuck. It, and it's cold there's no, up there. There's, there's, right? no, there's no truck stops up there? No, there's truck stops, I but mean, not you, once but you, you gotta, get But you got to get back out and go get fuel. Guess what? I got you. If yeah. you get 100,000 trucks up there, they ain't got no fuel. So listen. I got you. Listen. Okay, yeah. First, y'all need to understand. Talking about going into town. We not mocking y'all. We support the convoy. We just want y'all to be prepared. prepared. Yes, that's important. So it's not a big because mess. Because we make this big ruckus as a trucking community. We get up there, and we run out of fuel. It's, we're we gonna run look, out of food. We're gonna look stupid. Food. We're yeah. gonna look crazy. Yeah. Then they're gonna say, yeah. "Well, now what y'all gonna do?" Yeah, yeah. You know? So, in order to be taken even more serious, we have to also be prepared and organized and organized to and, do it. And most importantly, helpful to one another. Yes, that's the most important thing because you know what? We may, and even with people locally here, we may beef about you know. A Ford versus Chevy, or my truck's faster than yours, or yeah. or you know, it, it may be a beef worldly thing. You know, like some guys believe that it, it's more important to be able to drive your race truck to a racetrack rather than tow it there. But at the end of the day, when you're in a situation where you're defending your freedom, yeah, bro, you put all that aside, yeah, because I'm gonna tell you what, we all ride for the American flag. That's it. We're all Americans. Yeah. We support our soldiers. We support the people that protect us. Yeah. And, and if you, you know don't, what? If you don't, then you need to think about and reevaluate where you're at. Reevaluate. Right. Yeah. Oh, I mean, true. because I, I, I'm telling you, it sends chills up my spine knowing that I ride under the same flag that a lot of my friends of, of different uh, uh, people that came here from a different country, different colors. You know, whatever you're – at the end of the day, we're all Americans. Yeah. And you know what? If we're going to argue about, you know, nonsense stuff, we can argue about that next time. Yeah. But today, we're Americans. So, right. okay, so on this convoy, we – you get organized, you get situated, you get your gear. The main thing you're going to need is fuel, food, clothing. You know, yep. If toothbrush, you know, don't forget your toothbrush. Yeah, hygiene, you, stuff, you need hygiene. Yeah, medication, some, some yeah. trash bags. Yeah. Trash because, bags. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to leave trash everywhere. Right. No, 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 no. We here. Here's what we're doing. You know, uh, a big thing for us that we've preached on this show is you know the trucking community is not trashy truckers. Right. Now we heard that last night. Yes. So the trucking community though. <laughs> It's just like any other community. We're human. So are there going to be bad apples? 100%. We're human. Nobody's perfect. No group is perfect. One to three percent is bad right. apples. So we don't let the one to three percent ruin the rest. You, you know what I'm saying? So, so we have to make sure if we're standing up 
And let's let's be clear on what this convoy is standing up against. Let's be clear on that. It's on mandated vaccinations. Let's talk about that. What that means, and and let's give our opinion on that. So, are you okay with giving? No, no, I'm one hundred percent okay. Because so, let, but let me say this first. We have to, if we're standing up for rights and what we believe as Americans, because my my experience most really patriotic people and proud Americans are like I said proud so let's be proud let's treat our country like we're proud of it right let's not trash it up right yeah. let's not cause you know uh well and the the the, the thing the thing the mistake you don't want to make is is that you want to come out as being uh aggressive or you no, you, you're not you're not going to accomplish your goal by violence or right. or aggression no, no, no. No, right. not at all there comes a time for that right because this is this is but about this is, this is not it i don't no. think it's there yet. no no this is this is about our rights to me it's freedom that's it and i'm gonna tell you and and i'm i'm willing to to stand toe-to-toe with anyone and argue this one thing those guys are up there. You know, if you read on the news, it's about mandates. I don't agree with that. I don't think that they're convoying for mandates. I think the root of it is freedom. No, most definitely. It's choice. I'm just saying that that's that seems to be what triggered. That's that, what the media the is media says mandates because they want to make it into a bad thing. But right. to me, right. I'm going to tell you what it means to me. Freedom. If you want to get three shots or one shot or five shots or ten shots, this is America. Get it. Go That's do it. your choice. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't want to, it's my choice. Yeah. Right. If I choose, and this is why it was a controversial topic about seatbelts. You know what? Personally. Se- seatbelt law is the dumbest law, I think. Personally. If, really? If yes. I want to risk my life yes. and not wear a seatbelt, now I wear, I, I've got a lot to live for. I wear my seatbelt. Right. So, most definitely. Well, do I agree that they should make you wear it? No. No, I don't think it's so. It's not the government's job to make you to do something. To tell me yeah. how to live my life. Yeah, and pull money and, out of your pocket when you don't do yeah. it. Yeah. And then going back to the mandates about the, the face mask and all this stuff, this is America. Everything that you do as a business owner and as a as a citizen has an equal and opposite reaction. Right. Yeah. If you own a business, okay, I'm not, I don't like this, but I'm going to say, if you own a business and you want to require anyone that comes in there to have a face mask, that's your choice. If you're a it's private my owned choice. Business. Yeah. It's my choice. Do I want to shop there? Exactly. Right. It's your choice. You're the business owner. But the yep. thing of it is, how many times did I walk out of a place when somebody and I, I don't ha, I didn't have a problem wearing a mask. But it's the visceral I, sort of Okay. So I You did. need to put a mask on. Yeah. The aggression. Yeah. So I have right. a problem with a mask when I know I'm healthy. Right. Because the whole point of the mask is is it is that if you're sick and you're coughing a lot, common sense says, you know what? Bro, you need to put a mask on. Do you spitting that? You yeah, spitting but, that but, stuff okay. everywhere. I, I get it. Kind of the same as covering your mouth when you cough. I get it. Check it out. Simple. Okay, I get it. So, I don't disagree with that. But we're all forty. In, clo- I'm close to forty. We're almost seniors. <clears throat> y'all got. Way. We're we're y'all almost got, elderly. Y'all, we found out last night. Y'all we're going to talk about that later. Yeah, Fifty five. Y'all learn ten years from now. Y'all going to be senior citizens. But so. How often in your life, minus this time in our lives right now, have you ever wore a damn mask because you were sick? Never. Never. That's the thing. Yeah. So that was where I stood on the mask. Cause I listen, I bit the I bit the the hype from the jump too. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not a, I'm not saying that this isn't real. Like the the yeah, sickness I itself. I don't I've think had you it. I don't think you can ever say that the illness is not real. Right. The, the illness I've had is, whatever this is. Right. Yeah. I think three times already now. I had it not long ago. Yeah. And you know what? I took a lot of vitamins. I rested. Yeah. And guess what? All your whole life, you've been to everybody. I guarantee you, everybody's been to the doctor sick. And the doctor says what? 
It's a virus. Yeah. There's nothing I can do for it. Drink plenty of fluids. Yep. Take your vitamins. Yep. Get rest. Yep. That's all you can do. The coronavirus, no matter what variant it is, is a virus. That's it. It's that simple. So stay away from people. Treat it like a cold. Get rest. And now the unfortunate thing is, and we know this firsthand because we lost some of our closest friends. Yeah. So I'm not making light of it. We lost some of, like Dustin is, and I put this on Facebook the other day. He's irreplaceable. Right. We lost our salesman and our friend. Right. A man that I genuinely trusted. Right. I bought a, a hundred trucks from him. I, I don't know how many trucks I bought from him. 50, 20, 100. I don't know. I, I bought a bunch of trucks. A bunch. From him. Guess what? Not one time. I put my hand on the Bible on this. I put it on both sefas. I never looked at the price. Yeah. Not once. Yeah. I never looked at the price. Yeah. So I don't want to make light of the situation and say, oh, no, he don't care about the, the people that, that passed away because of the disease. It is a bad thing. I had it. A buddy of mine's got it right now. I mean, you know, he barely made it. It's it's bad. Listen, the thing the thing about it is, is it's it's just like anything else. If you're sick <clears throat> and it's it's a virus that you can spread, then stay at home. Don't get out. You know, if it's if you're not, then do your thing. Yeah, because if you re- rewind ten years ago, I mean, it was it was a deal. If you were sick, you'd go. I'm not coming in today. I don't want to be around. I don't need yeah. to be around people. You but know but I mean? we see it at work all the time. All we're, the time. We see people at work. I'm like, dude, are you feeling okay? He's, and and there's a guy's like, oh, I woke up with 102 fever. Yeah. Hey, man, you well, need to go home. Red well, here's flag. The, well, here's the thing, too. And here's this, this is something that I've, I've noticed different with Tri-State versus other places that I've worked, employer, other employers, was like where you have Troy who's against wearing a mask. And it's not against the it's not against the act of wearing the mask. It's the control he's of wearing the mask. He's not against it. He's probably more There's a bunch of guys in, at Tri State. Okay. There's a bunch of guys at Tri State yeah. that wear a mask. Okay. I, I worded that the wrong way. He's not against wearing mask. He doesn't choose to wear a mask. Right. Big difference. He doesn't choose to wear a mask. He gives people a choice to do what but, they want to do. But they're the first people to tell you if you don't feel good and you have this or you have that or you have a fever, just stay I don't, home. Don't come to work. Right, because we don't want everybody else in the office getting it. To right. where other people would be like, oh, "Well, make it happen," you know. Try to feel <sighs> better, you know. So Steve's sick again. Yeah, you know. So it's like, and it's and 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 like I said, that was wrong wording to say he's against mask. He's not against mask. No, he chooses not to wear a mask. It's my freedom. That's right, and that's what this whole thing is about. You know, we've got friends yeah. on both sides. Yeah. We've got friends that stand firmly against getting vaccinations. We got friends that get vaccinations. But it's such a hot topic, though, because, you know, and this is why you can't, and it's a good thing we don't have an audience here, because we would have a group hey of man, people. Hey, shout man, shout out them followers we do have. That's Troy, right. Yeah. Troy, be, he'd be dissing y'all sometimes. No, I, I don't. <laughs> but what I'm saying is you're either one or the other. You either want to roll your sleeves up and box somebody out because they're wearing a mask, yeah, or you're rolling your sleeves up boxing because they're not wearing a mask, and right. it's like you can't even have a civil conversation right. about it. You know, I've got well. Once you start doing something, that's the thing with the vaccine. I was thinking about this yesterday. Once you start doing something, you know, if you if you choose to take the vaccine or if you choose to wear a mask, then then you're on that team. So you have yes. to defend that position at that point because it becomes a part of your identity really yeah okay let's go back to freedom and freedom of choice let me tell you something about myself you're gonna and and i'll tell you the last part last but i've never taken a flu shot well i don't take flu shots either. me neither i don't take any shots i've had i've had i had flu shots before i was at that place in my life of knowing i've got a choice you know what i'm saying and so that's one of my things you know like I mentioned something to my wife last night about it. Like, you know, the flu's killed 50, 100 million people in time, you know, over the last I think your statistics might be. 50, no, 100 million. <laughs> no, 50 to 100. No, 50 million to 100 million over the last 140 years. Oh, I got years. you. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Over the last 140 years. I, and, and, and I'm not trying to, I don't know if that's exact correct or not. That's just internet. We don't need anybody fact checking. Yeah. It's I, a I lot. I don't care. It's a lot. And I'm not saying that if... 
coronavirus is what killed all these people during this pandemic, that it's killed more in a shorter amount of a time, you know, in a year versus the flu. But the flu's been around way longer, Mm -hmm. you know, and you still have a choice. Do you want to get a flu shot or not? Right. You know, what's not around right now? No. And let me tell you, it's mysteriously disappeared. No, the flu. Let me tell you something funny about this. Okay. So about a month ago, I had the whatever. You were sick. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever I had, I had. Yeah. And I was, it, I tell you what. It's the only time I've called in sick to work in five or ten years. <laughs> he called in. I did. He Who'd called, call? he called himself. Yourself? Yeah, he called himself. <laughs> yeah. Troy, I'm not coming no, in today. No joke. No joke. I had a mediation that day on a Zoom. I, yeah. And I was yeah. in the bed, but I got out of the bed and went to my chair, and I logged into the mediation, and I just held my phone up there as best I could. And the guy <laughs> said, are you okay? I said, no, nah, I ain't okay. I'm about to die. <laughs> he said, well, we'll cancel the mediation. I thought, about, no, nah, we ain't canceling that thing. We, we, All I got to do is sit here and listen to you anyway. <laughs> yes, no, yes, no. Um, So I still did work. But but uh, anyway, so I went to the doctor. This is to your point. So I went to the doctor. And it's hilarious. I, I want y'all to absorb this when I say this out loud. The doctor tested me for the covid he tested me for the flu. He tested me um, for whatever, all kind of stuff. And he wound up giving me this new, um, it wasn't Tamiflu, it was a new one. It's called like XO flu or something like that. It's one pill. And it's, it's like the fountain of youth. <laughs> I woke up the next morning and I felt like He-Man. And then. This one pill. Yeah, I got tired much you know, right. It wasn't really yeah, long. I was yeah, like, Oh, that was short lived, but I did get well quicker. Now I'm still suffering from, it's like this cough. I've had a cough for a month and it just will yeah. not go away. Yeah. Okay. Lost my point. Point is this doctor, I ought to say his name. No, no, no. <laughs> you know what he told me? He says, well, it ain't flu. Uh, cause there's no flu right now, but, um, uh, I'm being told that, uh, that the flu will be back in like April. <laughs> I guess he, I guess it called him and told him, "Hey, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back around." There's a April. distant land somewhere that he called, and <laughs> these elves said, "Yes, the uh, flu's gonna be back in April." Hey, I'm gonna tell y'all. There's a lot of stuff that I talk trash about, and I may fudge a story and <laughs> embellish a little bit. Nah, but I, I'm telling you, that is exactly what this doctor told me. He says, "I'm being told that the flu will be back in April." I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just make that up? And he's like, "No, there's no flu right now. None. Oh man, it's all the, the hey man, whoever it, it's all the gonna, Omicron. Hey, I'm whoever's like, yeah, whoever's gonna let him know when when the flu coming back? Let us know when anything let, else is coming. Yeah, too. let us know. Yeah, text yeah, me too because I want to know. <laughs> I want to know what's be good to know what to avoid. Hey, we need a button on there to release the Omnicron. <laughs> anyway, I'm not I'm not trying to make light of it, but nah, cuz I, mean, I I was I'm telling you. Listen, but here's the thing. We No, nah, I know. I yeah. was the sickest I have ever been. Yeah. I'm talking fever coming out both ends, chills. And some people so to go through that cuz I was the same way. To go through that, you know, and then still be Make the choice to not wear a mask. It's still my choice. It's still our choice. You know what? I lost four pounds. And people, I didn't. I don't know what happened. But people, you didn't have you didn't have pounds to lose. Bro. I lost four pounds, man. You lost four four pounds and gained uh, two abs. God, <laughs> but I think I broke a rib. I told you last coughing, night. Yeah, coughing. coughing will do it, man. Man, yeah. I'm gonna tell you what. If, if if there's any doctors on this show, comment and tell me. I seriously think I broke a rib. And it's been a month now. If and, that, if and it that still doc, hurts. If, if that doctor is watching the show, just tell him. Don't that, comment. Now comment. No, tell, do not comment. Tell him comment his, anonymous. Tell him his broke rib will come next week. <laughs> no, but I'm dead serious. Like I mean, yeah. No, it's rough. It, it hurts me. Like I can't take a full breath. Yeah, the coughing yeah. is rough. And you know, to some people watching, we may sound like. I think I'm on. I I like, think I'm gonna die of cancer. We say. I, I think that's. We That's been. my phobia for real. Is it really? Okay. Cause, okay. Because everybody, get, everybody get. in my family dies of cancer. Okay. It ain't got to be. It ain't got to be. Nah, man, you can't. You can't speak that. I just get rid of that phobia, man. Yeah. I feel it. Yeah, you feel it. 
That's a bad spirit. Every time you, something like that happens, I was like, yeah, here it comes. Uncle yeah. Jack. My Uncle and he, Jack. He, and he be picking on me all the time because, you know, I people people that don't know me, people that know me know I, I suffer from medical anxiety. Yeah, I know. Like, I, I, get, oh, okay. I get a little headache, man, and I think the first that's thing I think is, well, that's when this gotta, first thing hit, I call, and I'm like, Steven, you all right? You dude, all right over there? Because here's the deal. Let me tell you something nah, Check it out. If he has one running nose, he's like, oh, Troy, I, I'm not going to be able to come in today. Man, I'm probably nah, going to die. You full of it, bro. And I'm I like, I want y'all to know, Troy be, uh, he, Troy be full of it. So, it. so I text his wife, and I'll be like, will you tell your husband to get his butt out of bed and go to work? <laughs> he's he's so not full dying. Of it. He's so <laughs> but no nah, man he be he be he be fudging the story a little bit hey everybody's got their kryptonite right yeah cancer is mine because i've seen so many of my close people like very close people die of cancer yeah but it ain't gotta be you know i i'm convinced yeah. though if people eat right i'm convinced if people would put it's real simple if people put the right things in your body the right thing well the right things are gonna come out I convinced, I'm convinced when convinced God. Convinced of it. I'm convinced when God wants you to come home, you're going home. I'm convinced of that. I don't care what you eat. Yeah. Well, there's, saying, choice, uh, there's, there's some choice. choices. There's choices. There is choice. choice. There. I think you can't tempt fate. Yeah, I mean. You well, can't just walk okay, out in front well, of a say bus. This, let's just say this. If you're eating a bucket of fried chicken a day. I'm just, no, most I'm, not, I'm, saying? I'm just saying. I love chicken, man. Hey, well, man, chicken, I, I love chicken KFC too. KFC shut down, bro. No, really? I didn't. Yeah. I seen it on Nacogdoches Talk. Yeah, and KFC shut down on North Street. That's hey, let's bigger. circle back around to freedom, All right. and and I'd like to hear y'all's take. You freedom know, freedom on eating some fried chicken. You yeah, that too. You, oh, well, you're free okay. to eat fried chicken. Okay, man. so let me finish with my freedom. My freedom is, we live in the greatest country. We all have our faults, so there's always going to be that comment. Well, what about this? What about that? I get it. Yeah, and we know there's not no, all y'all going to agree with us. It's not perfect. But in my opinion, it's the best. No, most definitely. It's the best. Well, even people it, that. As long as we don't keep continuing moving in the direction we're moving. Well, that's the thing. And, and then, too, compared to, compared to history, yeah. America's a miracle. No, it, most definitely. It's a miracle. It, it yeah. is. So I like freedom. I also, y'all are not going to be surprised about this, but the viewers are. I don't like to be told what to do. Uh, I just, I, I, you know, I, yeah. okay, like, that brings that's a good topic. Like the mask, and yeah. oh, if, 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 you know, now if you don't go get the shots, then you can't travel or you can't do this. But if you get the shots, then you still have to get a negative test. And even if you get the shots, you can still get sick and spread it and all this. And <laughs> good. I'm See? Crying. You're going to blow out the microphone, son. Anyways. So, which goes back to the American spirit. I think that's the American spirit that 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 when we ran away from England, essentially, it was going. I don't want you to tell me what to do anymore. Yeah, that's, right. I mean, that's it. Like, right. you have your choice, and I'm not trying to lose friends over this. But man, it's I like I've said before. But if I you lose a friend over this, it wasn't a real friend. Wasn't a real friend. I mean. I've had a lot of people on social media try to lure me into arguing mm -mm. about. That's just what people. I'm just not do. gonna. Mm -mm. I'm just not nah. gonna. I'm not gonna get into that over social media and, no. and argue back and forth because nah. you know what, I I support your freedom yeah. to believe and act how you feel. It's do what you want to do in this situation. Right. You know, like some of our friends, they're a hundred percent for. We talked about one of them. He's a hundred percent for the vaccines. That's yeah. great. I support that. I'm not making fun of nobody. Yeah. That's right. You know, one of the best drivers we got, I never see him without a mask on. Yeah. I don't go picking on him. No. Right. Because if that's what he believes, that's great. And that's what makes this country great is is yeah. that you can make your own decisions. Yeah. Right. And well, the, I can the, make mine, but if I'm not going to make fun of you and ridicule you, then you don't get to do it to me. You know, right. the the thing about it is, is, is you're going to get those people that are going to go, okay, if you drive, uh, if you're driving down the road, back to the seatbelt, you're driving down the road and you don't want to wear a seatbelt, that's your life that you're putting in danger. And then they're going to say that if you're not wearing a mask, that's you putting someone else's life in danger. 
or if you're not getting a vaccine, you're putting someone else's life in danger. But I'm not going to say every one of them, but to all of the people that feel that way, look in the mirror and tell me some of the de- the decisions and choices you make on a daily basis. Right. You know, do right. you go out with your friends to the bar and drink and then drive home? Right. Do you do this? Do you maybe hit the gas a little fast to go through that yellow light? Yeah, I had a guy past me going 95 miles you know what an I'm hour saying? the other like, day. It's like, you're kind of putting my life in danger and my just, kids. Let's just keep it all together. You know what I'm saying? And right. not not make one thing worse than the other. Because um, I got friends that are, oh, I mean, openly like, if you don't get no vaccine, get your shots. Get your shots. So wear a mask. Wear a mask. Do this. Do that. You know, I seen a doctor well, just the other day. At at a uh, uh, what was his name? I ain't gonna say. <laughs> I seen a doctor just the other day at a restaurant, and and I paid attention. He opened the door. Funny, you know, he reached down the bottom and used one little finger. Don't but, be looking at I've me. I've been doing that but for then, years. Though. Nah, but the thing is, but then he went in the restaurant and just did his thing. Like, what's yeah. the difference? I yeah. get it. The door is a high traffic place. Right. You know. You know what I say from the very first day of this thing, because you and here's the important thing: you don't know. If you're that one person that this virus is going to get the best of. Right. All right. Yeah, because it had had no, there was no, they were saying in the beginning that it was elderly people or you had pre-existing conditions. And then all of a sudden it was, it was like a whenever, whoever, however. You just don't know. But, but I don't know enough about it to really speak on it. I just, I, I, I won't give my opinion on on that well what, what I, I was about to say but um don't be scared no be scared of. It, it's just well let, let me it's just too controversial th- well this is what i was i'll just i'm just saying all right i'm this just saying really, i hate that phrase by the way that's a that's a pet peeve then i'm gonna say what it. i'm gonna say i'm it. just saying i'm gonna say it all the time now because my wife would say it all the time and it was ju- you just saying just to be saying i'm Carla. just saying <laughs> Carla, if you will, start saying that all the time. All the time. Me and, Carla, me and Carla, me and Carla, me and Carla, we're going to hit them from both sides. I'm just saying. Okay, so I was thinking about this the other day. I'm just saying. Think about how many pharmaceutical commercials that we have seen over the last 30, 40 years. Right? Think yeah. about this. You need a pill. You need a pill. Yeah. You need a pill. And then what you happens five shot. years later? Hold on lawsuits of who's doing this if you took this let me say I'm from a- the law office of two take tim <laughs> right if you took <laughs> that call <deal. laughs> me nah, well it's but then okay let me stand my, my my thought you need a pill you need a pill you need a pill you need a pill what's the first word that they use when this this whole thing came out i don't know pandemic yeah so you got because what i couldn't figure out was like how did they get everybody? Or let's just say, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not gonna say they. I'm not gonna say there's a group of pe- mysterious group of people out there that's making all this happen. But how did they get everybody to react the same way at the same time? Well, they tested it first. Toilet, toilet they paper. They tested it first with the toilet paper. Toilet paper, right? Yeah, Why was, did everybody go out and buy toilet paper, right? Why prayer. did ever? How did they get to do this? Social well, media. Well, if you train somebody, if you train marketing, yeah. if you train somebody to, you need a pill. You need a pill. Trust in this pill. Trust in this. Trust in that. Trust in the shot. Blah 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 blah. And then you hit them with a trigger word. They're all going to do the same thing at the yeah. same time. It was to me. It was the most brilliant marketing. Okay. Let me make well, you one. know other countries real quick. Other countries like uh like in Europe. There was a, a lady came over, I think it was from Europe, and I heard her saying that uh they don't have commercials about medication. I don't think they should. No. At all. And now like we stream everything. We don't have cable. We 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 stream everything whether whether it's you know, all the different uh streaming platforms and no matter what you're on. The, one out of three of the commercials is or is a drug. You're gonna get yeah. a drug commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't take medicine. I I never take medicine. I took that exo flu because I thought I was. I really. I, I I was so sick. I didn't. I didn't. Um, and if you take medicine, I take felt medicine. like it. I felt like if if I would have got much much worse. I mean, I was on the verge. The only thing that kept me out of the hospital was I kept telling myself that there's really nothing they can do. 
I just kept drinking Gatorade. Yeah. I kept taking my vitamins. I couldn't eat anything. Well, it goes back to the vitamins too. Is <clears throat> is why why did why did vitamin C and vitamin D and zinc and all these things that are your naturally boost your immune system? Why did all those things go away? Why mm-hmm. was that all of a sudden yeah. a bad thing? When we you you said it earlier, when you used to go to the doctor, they'd say get plenty of rest. So drink water and yeah. take some vitamin C. So. It's almost like this show is rehearsed. Yet again, <laughs> you brought up an excellent topic. So let me share with you one thing that I've learned in business, and this goes for whatever side you vote for, because we are pretty 50-50 now in America. Yeah. But let me share with something that every single American should always ask themselves when they're thinking about a subject or what's going on in the world or anything. There's one thing I do for myself, and I would encourage everyone to do this, and it's free. This is a life lesson of my own. I didn't learn this from anybody else. I got it from myself. Follow the money. Follow the money. In any situation, if there's a... I'm serious. Yeah. No, I'm just laughing because that's why I be following you around all the time. Follow the money. In any situation, especially when you're dealing with the government, yeah, you know, I'm 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 going to leave out a lot of comments that I feel personally, and I'm just going to leave it at that because I don't want it to turn into a political thing. He's just saying what I'm teaching is, and the thing that it don't matter if you're rich or poor, extremely wealthy or whatever. If you see something going on in your life with a friend in the news. 99.9% of the time, there's a reason for it going on. Yeah. And it most, I, I would say, all I just about say 100% of the time, it's rare you're going to find a situation that you can't follow the money. Right. So if somebody's, because sometimes I wonder, why'd that, guy, why'd that guy run for this office that pays $20,000 a year or $50,000 a year? That, that's nothing. I mean, he's a very qualified guy. Why would he do that? Okay. Follow the money. What's he doing during his tenure that he wants to get out of that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pandemic. Do you know how rich oh, these drug man. companies have gotten? Somebody yeah. is getting Let rich. me open up that box. Yeah. Do you know? Okay. These these tests that they're mailing out for free, nothing's free. Nothing no. is free. No. We paid for that. Right. If you're working right now and you're paying taxes, yeah. you paid for these tests well, that they're mailing like, out. It's just like exactly all right. the Two tests yeah. for every citizen in America. It's just like gets the, two tests. The stimulus checks and all We that paid people. for that, right? Yeah. That I mean, we paid for that. Right. Some drug company made them. All right. Let me open up this box. And I don't know who owns these stocks. I don't know what side of the aisle they sit on. Don't really care. I should care, as, you know, because this is what's wrong with everything. But in this context, context, we don't care. Guess what? Follow the money back. See if they own some stock in that company. <laughs> Somebody is making <laughs> some bank right now. I mean, crazy. That's what goes on, and yeah. I'm telling you, is that is that right though? Answer that. Is that is that morally right? Ethical. Ethical, I mean. It's et- is it, so the question is, is it ethical to own a boatload of stock in a company that you're about to award an, a, a big contract to the American people and then the profits of this company that you own part of is going to go way up and then your stock goes up so you make more money? Yeah. On something, I on, think anybody in America can yeah. look at that and make their own determination. Right. No, if you're making, that's whether, why I'm asking, yeah, whether yeah. it's ethical or not ethical. Well, if yeah. you're if you're making bank on something like a pandemic, you could call that not ethical. No, and most definitely, hundred percent, and yeah. fear mongering, fear mongering. Yeah. yeah, because okay, think, think about the word pandemic. What's in the root? Pandemonium. It's fear. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, you think about this. Abby and I have talked about this quite a bit. Before, when you were sick, three years ago, you didn't really pay much attention to it. No. But now, guess what? You're driving down the road, and you're like, 
hey, feel my forehead. Yeah. Yeah. My throat feels a little scratchy. Yeah. And the, and the, and I mean, the, yeah. You, I mean, yeah. It's, oh, it's, I think it's I'm not, sick. It, well, it used to, it was a cold, maybe. Yeah. Now, and, and it's I believe, yeah. I don't feel good. Yeah. You know? I believe yeah. so strongly. Comment on this too. Because a lot of people are going to disagree with this. Because I've got several doctors in the family, and, and they're going to disagree with this. Well, some of them will, some of them won't. I don't know. You well, know what? It's, it's kinda, you know what? Comment. It's cool if you do. I, I, Co- comment either way, because because I believe what I believe. Because yeah. what? It goes back to my freedom. Yeah. Because you know what? The government can't take away. Government cannot take away my mind yeah. and what I believe. Uh, most definitely. They can make me wear a seatbelt. Yeah. Or I had to pay $100. This is like Paul. It's just like Paul preaching about freedom when he's incarcerated. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's you can't take my nah. mind. You know what? I used to have a boss, and and uh, he man, he owed a lot of money, and he used to tell me all the time. He'd say, "Man, they can't take my birthday." But what he <laughs> meant was, they can't take my mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can't know, take your, invi- your his individualism. And he failed a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. But uh, um, but it's no secret. Like you know, people know that that know me. Like I don't, I, I cringe at the medical industry. Just as a as a money making thing, Damn, like, yeah. So go back. What did I say? Follow the money, because you know, for 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 me, it's like it's it's borderline. It's hustling. Well, it's it's one hundred percent hustle, but it's borderline. I mean, it's a business. It's unaffordable. Follow the money, and because so, guess what? If you're well, you don't go back. Yeah. So they lost their house payment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I don't so, mean but it, to cut no, you no, off. no. But it's all, it, it follow all follow the money. Yeah, it all makes this, it all makes sense as as to how much you know because you know up until like here the past few years you didn't have even say prescriptions, you didn't have like uh, these prescription apps that get you these ginormous discounts. What did I just say? Prescription. You need a pill. You need a pill. Yeah. But guess what? For thirty when you, years, when you take this pill, for whatever. Then you got to go take another one. Well, this one causes headaches. Well, now you need a headache pill. Well, the headache pill causes you to have diarrhea. Well, now you need a diarrhea pill. Well, guess what? The diarrhea pill keeps you up at night. You know, my first diarrhea is going to keep you up at night for sure. Now you need Ambien. Well, you know, my first my first experience one time uh, with with medication being pushed on me was uh, I was an adult, an adult, and I I broke my ankle. And people that know me know I'm very anti narcotic. You know, my mama died from addiction to, you know, pain medication. Like, my mama would take 30 Vicodin a day. I'm not playing. Like That's hardcore. You know, I'm talking. and But my mama would go. That would kill me. She, she'd go on the show. Like, she put on a show to get that script, you know. Um, but, you know, rest in peace to my mama. You know, I'm not trying to talk bad about her. I love her. But, um, <clears throat> but I'm very anti-narcotic. Very. I'm equal. Equal Be- on that. Because. Yeah. Or more. Because of what I grew up and seen, you know what I'm saying, and not only with one parent but with the other at the same time. So I broke my ankle. All I wanted was 800 milligram ibuprofen. That's all I wanted. You know, I don't need no this, no that. This dude literally, after I told him twice, this doctor still wrote me a script. Yeah, for a narcotic, for a narcotic, and I told him a script him, is a prescription for all those that don't know. But but you want to know why? I told I looked him dead in his face and I said, "No, I don't need that." Well, I'm gonna write it just in case you need it. I said, "I don't need it. I don't want it." He said, "But I'm gonna give it to you anyway." I said, "You're gonna write it. I'm gonna rip it up and throw it in this trash can in this room." Yeah, and that's exactly what happened. He still wrote well, the prescription. Want to know why? Because he gets a. A little stipend, gets a, little, a little bit of something. Know, yeah. You can call it a kickback. You can call it a bonus. You can call it whatever. Yeah. But you know, and this is not to cast aspersions on people that are in the medical industry either, because I got people in my family that are in the medical industry. There's still, good, oh, good most definitely. Definitely. you know yeah. what? There's a doctor who lives down the road from me. Yeah, and he doesn't take uh, he doesn't take insurance money, and I think he's a good man. Yeah, yeah. I think he genuinely wants people to be well. Yeah, yeah. there are some good ones, but then. I'm not. I certainly would never name names, but I know some people that that write hella scripts. I'm talking yeah. about that's their well, business. Well, the thing that tri- yeah. that the, the thing that tripped me out was was you know I have to go to the heart doctor every once in a while to get checked out and that kind of thing and get updates and this this kind of thing. 
So the last time I went in this to particular heart heart doctor, he was he'd been my heart doctor for a while, and so we went in. First thing, I'm just there to get six just months. Say, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. You know, and the first thing he asked me is, "Have you had COVID?" Yeah, and I was like, "I would have said I got it right now." Hey. <laughs> I so coughing. that was the first thing he asked me was that I was like, I'm yeah. here for a heart appointment. Yeah. No, I don't have COVID. So yeah. I walked out, went and found another doctor. So what you're finding is you're finding, that's the weird thing to me is the divide between these guys that are saying like what Joe Rogan gets in, in trouble. Shout out Joe Rogan, man. We, hey, hey, we hey, support you. You got to do a Joe. Hey, you got to do a Joe. Joe Rogan. Look, look, man. <laughs> We got your microphones and your stands. <laughs> we coming for your check next. We coming for your check next. Hey, follow the money. <laughs> follow the money. Hey, you know what? Everybody got to have goals. Yeah. yeah. So Joe gets in trouble for this whole thing where he's having ex experts on his show, right? I got to so, say something about that in a minute. Go so on. he's having experts on his show, right? So he's having people, doctors that have two two different views like some are like saying that the COVID thing is not as big of a deal as everybody's saying some are saying it's a big deal blah 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 well he he got in trouble because he was having more on there that were anti-COVID so he had to make a whole video to say I'm sorry I'm going to try to balance out he put this out he yesterday. chose to make a video Let's right say that. yeah oh he ain't going to be pushed into it I'm right. not anti-COVID I had it okay yeah me too Abby had it I, I believe in it yeah I just don't think the government should be able to force me to either wear a mask right. or take a or shot. To the question, that's with, it. To the question on why he got in trouble is like, I'm going to have more experts on my show. Well, who is defining who Who's is a, the expert at this point? Right. Because you got some doctors yeah. that are like very high in some. One of the guys he had on uh, the other day has like nine patents on uh, RNA vaccines. Yeah, that sounds like an expert to me, you know, but he was going, yeah, COVID's not as big of a deal. I'm paraphrasing. COVID's not as big of a deal as everybody's making out to be. Yeah. So he got in trouble for that. So what defines who an expert is and who an expert is not? Which doctor is right? Somebody's got to be right. Yeah. And I think from our standpoint, from a trucker standpoint, I think it, it, it speaks volumes and we have to say that, you know, um, we were necessity during the whole pandemic. I, there I'm, was no way of us no. stopping what we do. I'm so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. so proud to be part of the trucking community during a time when, like this. Because when yeah. everybody else stayed home, I'm so proud to be part of the trucking community and 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 call these guys my friends. Because when everybody else stayed home, we were working. Yeah, and not only we, we not work, only just working, like working some, overtime. Somebody was bringing that <clears throat> toilet paper. That's what I'm saying. You know, somebody was, you know, the shortages. Because what happens when a shortage like that takes place, you know, uh, it 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 always falls on the trucker. Tro uh, Tim and I were having this conversation the other day. So you go to a store, right? They're out of something. Everything. You know? What do they say? Gatorade. Truck. No, I mean, just anything. Like they you say, go in. Oh, truck didn't come. Truck didn't come. Yeah. Ah. We didn't get a truck. You know that from even working in a, in a grocery yeah. store. Let me tell you why a truck didn't come. Get ready with the <laughs> the gun. Yeah, I'm going to turn up the volume on this one. I'm going to tell you why the truck didn't come. Because he went to a TA and he got <laughs> sick and he's probably still laying in the sleeper. <laughs> That's the I, nastiest truck stop. Oh, you know I got what, y'all, y'all, you know what? <laughs> Comment on here and back hey, me up if you hey, think TA is, is the nastiest mother <laughs> truck stops. Man, mother. me and Steve went out and we tested that the other day. Yeah, we did a truck stop. Uh, you can't comparison. use this one. Though. It's brand new. No, nah, that's here. what I'm saying. Like it was a little. <clears throat> but I tell you what, even though as good as this one is, it still didn't hold a candle to loves. Loves but, it. But, but even you know, uh, so guys. Locally here, we had a, a locally owned truck stop, decent size, and it was bought out by a TA. And uh, I'm going to tell you what, TA guys, if y'all are watching this, 
you need to step your game up because you got some <laughs> nasty That's truck right. stops. Yeah. <laughs> They are so nasty. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. There's so much COVID in the cracks of them floors. <laughs> a mask ain't going to help you, bro. No. No. I'm telling you. Not even a gas mask. I'm telling Sometimes you. Sometimes you need a gas mask. Man, we It's bad. Yeah. yeah we're going we're going to bring that video to y'all cuz we filmed it all. A little yeah. lingering going it's on. It's bad. It was funny cuz we did a review on the bathrooms and there. <laughs> Tim went in one of them bathrooms. He had to come right out. <laughs> it's so bad. Like, y'all, you need to step your game up. You owe it to the trucking community. You know what, truck drivers? I'm going to tell you what. If you want to fix something, look at them Canadians up there. Yep. Yeah. Stop. If, yeah, I'll guarantee you. Quit going to them truck stops that if don't take care of you. This is how, remember what I said earlier, every action has an equal, opposite, or greater reaction. Yeah. So if the, well, I feel like I'm in cl- science class. So <laughs> if the truck stops nasty as a chain, don't stop at them no more. We're gonna get yeah. the, and you're going to wake them up. We're yeah. going to get to pour some vinegar and some baking soda. Again, follow the money. Follow the money. Yeah. You, but if you keep on spending your money there and don't, you know, act like it ain't no big deal or whatever, well, guess what? They just keep on. Yeah, you T. Know Hayes what? is a big change, And too. you know what? As a matter of fact, <laughs> let me shoot some more shots at them. <laughs> they took the American flag down. Whoa, whoa Who up. did? This local one. As soon as T.A. took it over... They took the American flag down. Go out there and look. It's gone. All right, check it out. If I tell you all what, you tri-state trucks and all you massy motor freight trucks, when we stopping to no TA ain't got no American flag hanging up. Man, this you America. Better, you better go to that local Morgan Oil. You better <laughs> find that Loves or that Pilot Flying J. But if a TA is taking flags down. If you see a flagpole and they ain't got a fresh flag up there. How many TA managers running out to the hardware store right now grabbing some flags? They ain't, No, they doubling down, I'm telling you, because this was a topic about two or three years ago. Was it? Yeah. But it just it just hit me. And I will tell you this. I'm going to go look today because I'm going to lunch right by the TA. And if there's an American flag flying, I will come on and apologize. But I'm pretty sure I ain't going to have to apologize because the day they took that sucker over, they took the American flag down. That's crazy. Y'all back me up on that. Comment on that, too. We need about two or 300 comments. Two or three. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, yeah. though, man. Because you know what? This is Here's another thing that makes me proud to be a, a part of the trucking community. The truckers are the most patriotic people. Man, they're they really, kind of. I heard somebody say the other day they're kind of the last man standing. I mean, they're kind of the the man. When Outlaw was alive and we used to truck, he used to tell me we was the last cowboys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to tell me, T. Roy, we the last cowboys. Yeah, and when we're gone, there's no hope. That's it. And I yeah. think that that, that I, that's a lot of truth in that. Last there's of the Mohicans. Lot. You know, somebody posted uh something on social media the other day. I can't remember what platform it was, but it was a picture of uh. A picture of the back of their truck. He had his uh, he had an American flag stuck in the back of his trailer on his big truck, and and he had said that people were calling him racist and all kind of st- just for having an American flag. Yeah, don't buy my stuff then. Yeah, you know? you know what? If 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 you don't if you're not proud to be part of America, I mean, don't buy my stuff. Yeah, it's cool. It's easy. Go. You know what? Go to Venezuela. Try to buy something down there. It's hard. They don't have anything. Yeah. It didn't work. This whole thing that the government's selling you about socialism, it doesn't work. It don't if work. If you like socialism, go to one of those countries and just check it out. Oh, yeah. It it's doesn't be, work. It's going to be a fun, fun somebody, ride for you. Somebody has to pay for all this. And right. if there's no one working, the government, this is a common misconception, the government doesn't have any money. Right. It's our money. Right. That's exactly right. Hey, we're going to get this program shut down before we even get started. <laughs> I don't know. They're going to cancel us. No, they ain't. I've already canceled myself, so I, we're good. What? Three poles. Look at that. Three poles, no three. flag. So we when we did our review, we did some, some drone footage, too. And we'll put this up on the screen for y'all. Um, ain't got none? Let me three, see. Three flag poles and not a single flag. I told you. They took the American flag down. And, this and was, the Texas flag. And this there's was there's just, no flags. This was just, what? Two, Not even their own flag. Two and a half weeks ago. Well, when I found one bad truck, uh, found, filmed one bad trucker the other day. Yeah. I, that's when that's I noticed. That's when you noticed it. I said, them son of a, didn't, <laughs> they took the flag down. Yeah. I told Abby, I said, we ain't shopping here no more. 
Yep. Yeah. No, I mean it, it. And and hey, and people are on edge right now. That's all it takes is is seeing one thing and going. I'm going. And over maybe here. Cause, no. Hey, here's cause the at the deal, end man, of the maybe, day, at the end of the day, if you're in a truck, even if it's a company truck, you have the choice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna ask him. I'm gonna ask the manager next time I'm in there. Ask him. Put on yeah. film too. Say, I'm hey, go I go in there. And say, so I'm doing a little documentary yeah. on. You know, uh, was you it, was it intentional? What's the reason when the flags come down? I think you should film it. Bring bring Tim. Yeah. Say, was it intentional? We're trying to clear the air. Yeah. That you took the American flag down. It's a little documentary called Where You Flag At? Whoop, whoop. <laughs> hey man, so check this out. On a whole nother topic. We ain't uh we ain't told nobody, but this is the first place we're gonna we're gonna let it be Uh-oh. known. Uh oh. Uh oh. This is a big one. So we is just, it we gonna talk about what I think we've been talking we, about? What we, we talked about last night. We just walked out of a meeting last night. Which See, was a stellar meeting, by the way. It was so good. It was this a good is, meeting. This is one of four meetings that we've been in for this. This has been a long and it, process. And all four meetings have been phenomenal. Yeah. So the name of this show is. You got dr- the name of this show. We is, don't have drum rolls. No, nothing. We don't have drum rolls. Let's see. <laughs> My posse's on Broadway. That ain't hey. it. <laughs> hey, can I tell him one thing before you before you say that? So we in the city council meeting last night in uh, the it's standing room only. Yeah, it's so many people in there because they had a controversial thing they were talking about. I would well, say not that, just that I thought bro. it was going to come to blows. They, at I one thought point. they were there for us, but they were yeah. but they were apparently there for something else. Wait a minute. So, so the whole thing is packed. I mean, it is so packed full of people. Yeah. And Steve texted me. He said, I "Bet you don't say posse's on Broadway." I'm like. Man, I've been. You know, the thing is, is the thing for me is, and I called Tim too. And Tim was, you know, Tim said he was back there. I almost thought he was gonna have to leave from laughing. You know, the thing is, is, is I even told Jessica. You know, next to me, I told her, I said, "This, this ain't a good place for us." Like. We like to cut up. We like to have fun. I could have cut up Bro. so bad. Yeah, in there. yeah. Man. I could have went like, <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have a comment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, just but, keep doing it. So name of this show is Trucking with Troy, and so I'm gonna let Troy tell y'all what's going down. <laughs> Are we saying the date? Yeah. September 16th and 17th. We got the first annual. This is so exciting. This has been a long time leading up to this. A lot of work has gone in just to be approved by the city for us to be able to announce it. So this has been going on for months, but we about to have our own show. Mm-hmm. Own truck show. We're going to have our own truck show. We can fit 100 bobtails. Downtown. Downtown. Nacogdoches. Nacogdoches on and the Brick Street. And for those of y'all that don't know, and this is controversial in Nacogdoches sometimes to me, but I stand firm behind this. Nacogdoches is the oldest town in Texas. The yeah. oldest it was founded town in, in 1716. Texas. Man, it's a cool downtown too. And all brick. Yeah. Sort of yellow lights a little yeah. bit. They're not white. So the light, and that's why we always go downtown to to film our trucks because the the light bounces yeah. off the trucks. Yeah, the ambiance is just it's so good. So yeah. we think we can fit a hundred bobtails. We got to step it off, and and we've got a little bit of work to do before we can open up registration. I'll yeah. bring my measuring tape. And I believe we can fit 100 bobtails. It'll be a bobtail truck only. Uh, we'll have spots for maybe three combo units. Yeah. Unfortunately. Both Cephas get one of those. Both Cephas got one. <laughs> Lot Rock probably go hell yeah. Because that's, that's another thing. And you know. and I, I, I got to say, you know, uh, Mitchell Bottomley has been so good to us. Oh, yeah, man. I, I, he gets number three. Yeah. And and if he's bringing that one trailer. I, he's got – Mitchell Bottomley gets number three. He's yeah. been he's been such a good friend to us. So, he, September 16th, 17th, Old Town Rig Down. Old Town, Old Town Rig, Down. Rig Down. It's the first official Stockville Judge or not truck judge. Show. It is a non-judged show. So what we want y'all to do is we want you to get pressed and dressed and come park your truck and just have a good time. Yeah. No stressing, no worrying about this or that. We're going to have Friday <clears throat> evening will be truck show, lights, light show. We'll turn the lights on, let everybody walk around, look at everybody's lights downtown. It's going to be phenomenal looking. Um, 
let me say what they got. Here's the benefits. It's downtown, mm. so there's Wi-Fi or or 5G. Yeah. I think they might be br- the city might be bringing in portable Wi-Fi, maybe. But yeah. but there's good se- Nacogdoches has excellent cell phone signal. Walking distance to restaurants, walking distance to hotels. Yeah. Um. There's going to be a lot of food trucks that are going to be there. Yeah. Electricity in certain places. But there's also the difference too is is um, there's also restaurants. Yeah. Yes. Not just food trucks this time. Well, the food trucks here are. Are, oh, they're pretty yeah, good. They're I good. mean, and 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 then there's the local restaurants that are on the square as well. Where and then shopping. So downtown, we got the difference is here downtown we have not just the food trucks. We have the restaurants that are downtown. Whether it's breakfast, whether it's steak, whether yep. it's you want to get some drinks, well, and and it's and it's all the way from like you know a little diner. All the way up to reservations only. Got dollies down there. It's at the Fredonia breakfast. Hotel. Yeah, Fredonia yeah. Steak, the you know, I mean, Republic Steakhouse. Um, for I, those of y'all, it's a BYOB event. There won't be any alcohol being sold. But just around the corner, I mean, very close walking distance, we have our own Fredonia Brewery. Local brewery. It's a mm-hmm. local brewery. Everything's brewed right there in-house. Um, man, it's just going to be a fun, it's just going to be different you know, than most truck shows that we've been to. A lot of truck shows are at convention centers. Uh, it's nothing but trucking. Um, the difference for us is going to be you're going to have trucking and you're going to have shopping. Shopping with the, So there's the, a bunch of shops there, too, that people can go shop at. A lot of a, women boutiques. On the square. In a yeah. square, yeah. Yeah, some cool stuff. Uh, uh, the closest hotel is the Fredonia. Yeah. It's an excellent hotel. It, it's a historic. It's, it's a historical yeah. icon in this city. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of other restaurants. So one thing, uh, they do have um, a steakhouse in there that's reservation only too. So now would be the time if you're coming yeah. and you know you're going to register your truck. Yeah. Um, now would be the time to book your hotel rooms. And if you want a fancy steak dinner one of the nights, yeah, probably Friday night, Saturday night's concert. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, then I would go ahead and make your reservations at the at steakhouse. But a lot of cool restaurants, walking distance, the brewery, yeah. barbecue, different food vendors and food trucks. Friday night is the light show and an auction where we'll be raising money for the cause. The money goes through a nonprofit organization that Abby and I own. 100% of the money, and, and, and I plan on being extremely transparent on that. Every dollar that we raise, except for a very small portion of – uh, money where we have to buy like, you know, uh, the flyers and if we have to pay for any advertising, anything like that, right. it should be extremely small because the city's shutting down all the streets, you know, yeah. they're, they're working with the DOT to shut down all the streets. So we should be able to donate nearly a hundred percent of our money and the money is going to rebuild the old university building, yeah. which goes back to your point is pretty old. Yeah. And it's another historic another it's historic a historical site site here in Nacogdoches. So they were, they were short, um, you know, hundred thousand dollars or something like that. So, uh, the, the commitment that we made as a group, um, and our choice on this too was, you know, we're very pro Nacogdoches. Like, yeah, we're I from love, here. We love yeah. our hometown. I love that downtown. Um, and downtown is a great place. I've I'm always, gonna move here. I've all you are. Yeah. Um, I've Couldn't always. Couldn't say anything in the council meeting last night because I didn't live here. But <laughs> I thought about going up there and saying something anyway. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm, I live in Joaquin. I don't care what you. I y'all live do. in Shelby County. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now is is when we had these first meetings and and talked about you know shows having cause and purpose. Um, you know, a lot of shows go to some big charities and in, in which we support of all of that. Cause no, it's we, good. It's a good we, thing. We always sponsor our, our buddies and shows and stuff like that. And whatever their cause is, um, a big thing for us that we agreed on, um, as a group was we wanted it to be something tangible in, in directly in our community. Yeah. We wanted to be able to see, and we wanted Nacogdoches to be able to see what, the fundraising went towards. Right, right. You know, right. because a lot of times that money gets 
it doesn't get lost right, and it right, goes right. to good cause, you just never see you it. You never see it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and and at the end of the day, man, I mean, from from a standpoint of of a person that lives in Nacogdoches, and for this goes for any city at that. Yeah. Every city needs attention of some sort. Oh, right, yeah. right, right. You know, they need extra. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you, <clears throat> I don't know if I can speak about this, but it costs two hundred fifty thousand dollars to fix a bathroom. And I, let's spend like one minute on that. Two hundred and fifty thousand so, yeah. dollars. So, so we're meeting with the city, and we're like, okay, well, we think we can raise X amount of dollars, and and uh, we'd like to put bathrooms in the park. Update, update the bathrooms. This joker says. <laughs> We happen to have just gotten a bid on updating the bathrooms down there. I said he he said they're two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I was like, God, man, that's pretty high for a boys and girls bathroom. He said, Oh no, that's just for that's one one bathroom. One bathroom. One so, bathroom. So two half a million dollars for a boys and girls bathroom. Because they said the toilet's like forty or fifty grand. No, bro. I'm <laughs> not lying. I'm not making this up. <laughs> this joker told me he says, Well, they have to be hurricane proof, and I'm like. <laughs> hey, I don't know if any of y'all know this though, but if you can fit in the toilet, if it's a tornado or hurricane coming in the park, you got it made in the shade, baby. That's not, another not bright idea. That's another, not yet. <laughs> hey, that's another bright idea from the government. Let's make all cities totally equal. You know but, how likely it is for a hurricane yeah, to come right, up here? Right. And then couple it with if you were having a hurricane, extremely unlikely. We've had one and two in my lifetime, maybe. Yeah. Like seventy mile per hour winds, we get seventy mile per hour winds anyway. How about a tornado? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like at even least even less it, it even de- less likely. Define yeah. it and, as a tornado. And then, if you're <laughs> if you have a hurricane or a tornado come through, what is the likelihood of somebody needing to shelter in the bathroom? And how many people can you get in the bathroom? Man, I don't know, but it, it was it was, it was mind blowing because it was even like that's the well, government. Can, no, but it was even the in in. Caring, like I say, about where we're from, Troy even said, and it was like, well, can like can I like contract something? Can I put a bid in? It has to go through that funding. Yeah. And I said, has, well, I said, well, I'm pretty sure we could build a bathroom for about yeah. 20, 25 grand. Hey, yeah. that's why the mafia always said that it's uh anything that's scarier than us is a government. Nah, most deaf, man. Hey man, so Follow yeah. the money. Hey Follow man, we money. appreciate y'all. Uh convoy, we support y'all. Joe Rogan, we support you. What up, bro? Um, I know he ain't gonna see this, but <laughs> he might. Uh, yeah, he might. September sixteenth, seventeenth, downtown Nacogdoches, Old Town Rig, Rig Down. Down. It's official. Both Cephas will be there. It's official, baby. It is official. It's our own Stockfield Truck Show. Everybody wants to know where Lot Rights at. It'll be at the show. That's yep. That'll be the first time you see that it. That truck's gonna look good too. It, it, I've seen it. And 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 don't get scared of Bobtail. We got we got everything situated. Oh we got yeah, yeah, place that's important. That's important. So the city also gave us eight or ten paved acres that's fenced and locked, and we'll for put, us to drop and we'll trailers, put, and we'll have security out and there, and we'll so. have security. Yeah, and we want everybody. We want everybody. We'll be doing the podcast out there too. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah most definitely. Yep. And we're gonna be promoting. We'll see y'all at the shows throughout this year too, and pushing it, and uh, the the our web page, uh, our social media sites will be up. It's you exciting. Know, so I'm it's so fun, excited. Man. Old Town Rig Down, September 16th and 17th. Book your rooms now. Yeah. Nacogdoches did we mention? Texas. Did we mention uh, Lufkin's 20? Yeah. 20 Lufkin's miles. like 20 miles away. Yeah. It's not uh, a big deal to drive. Nah, Lufkin's. Center's yeah, yeah. like 30 minutes away. So if you can't get a room here, it's you, not a big deal. Yeah. 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 So man, we look forward to seeing y'all. Hey man, uh, we appreciate y'all watching. Uh, Trucking with Troy. I'm Steve. I'm Two Tech. Yep. I'm Troy. Trucking with Troy. Hey. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell. It means a lot to us. And comment all you can. We, yeah. I read every comment. So Yeah, and too, I mean, that's what we said the other day. If, if there's something that you want to hear about, comment. Tell us. Yeah, comment. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again so, to our sponsors, Rush Truck Center, Truck Accessories, Tri-State Vacuum and Rental, Massey Motor Freight. Black Tie. Black Tie. Yep. Thank those, y'all for tuning in. Those silent sponsors also. We appreciate y'all, man. Also. Yes, sir. Yep.